Welcome on in to the Josh Reese Show. My name is Josh Reese and this is my show. Today, the video is going to be describing and talking about Patrick Beverly and getting selected to the NBA All Defensive Team, number one, the first team. Congrats to Patrick Beverly, quite a season for the Rockets' feisty point guard. But before I get into that, please follow my friends over at Countryside Massage here in Conroe, Texas. They are linked in the description below. Just give them a follow, a like on Facebook. That's all they are asking. That's all I would ask of you. They're supporters of mine. I'm supporters of them. Do them a solid and do me a solid at the same time by giving them a follow. But anyways, let's talk about Patrick Beverly. Um, on Monday, he had a quote to Mark Berman. Mark Berman did a story on Patrick Beverly making the... Um, All-NBA first team, first team defense. I'm sure the Chronicle will end up having a story as well. Um, but this is a quote from Patrick Beverly, and uh, it's via Mark Berman. You can find it on his Twitter feed. He had a couple other quotes there as well. But uh, this one just kind of resonated and kind of summed up all of Patrick Beverly. Um, so, quote from Patrick Beverly, Everyone knows I came from humble beginnings. I had to crawl before I walked. I had to endure a lot of stuff. Coming off the bench when I first got there, playing in the D-League, playing overseas, Ukraine, Russia, Greece, end quote. Patrick Beverly has done a lot in his NBA, well, his basketball career. He literally had to learn to crawl before he could walk, and now he is running. He is one of the better defensive players in the entire game of basketball. Um... On Monday, when it was announced, he got 30, 38 first place votes. Good enough to be second, right behind Chris Paul in the voting. And it's kind of weird, though, the way if you look at the All NBA defensive teams, you have two point guards that are on the All NBA first team. <clears throat> first team, excuse me. And then on the All NBA second team, you have four shooting guards slash small forwards. On the All NBA second team, it's it's kind of weird how the NBA does this stuff. You think it would be one point guard, one shooting guard, one whatever, but now since basketball is kind of blending into all these different roles and whatever, you're going to get all all these combos in this type of stuff. But anyways, I digress. Patrick Beverly's season was phenomenal. He was tenacious as he always is, but it seemed to he even take took a step up. Now with James Harden handling the ball exclusively, it looked like Patrick Beverly could really just worry about play, doing 3 and D, playing defense, shooting threes, and grabbing rebounds. One of the big things that Patrick Beverly improved a lot on this season was his rebounding. He was ferocious rebounding, coming in out of nowhere, stealing it from bigger guards, it was just amazing watching him night out, night in and night out, collecting it's sometimes seven, eight, nine rebounds a game. Oftentimes, he would lead the Rockets in rebounding. I don't know how that was possible, considering they had Montrezl Harrell, Trevor Reza, Ryan Anderson, Nene, all these other guys. But yet you had little tiny 6'1", Patrick Beverly, that was going out and out-rebounding everyone. Insane. What are the other things, and there's no stat that I could find on this, but it... it it blew my mind the amount of times that people would try to um, front pat or people would try to bat, uh, you know uh, po throw the ball into Patrick Beverly um, defenders you know they 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 put up the big big giant power forward or center and you'd have Patrick Beverly there the only guy but Patrick Beverly would be fronting this big giant um, offensive player and yet they could not find a way to get the ball into them. So many times Patrick Beverly has screwed up an offensive plan, um, an, uh, an offensive drive, just because he's not allowing the postman to get the ball. It was it was incredible to watch. There was a couple times against the uh, against the Thunder where he did this in the in the Oklahoma City playoff playoff series where he would stop Enos Cantor or Stephen Adams from even getting the ball, getting the ball. This is a seven foot player that Patrick Beverly is denying access to. Amazing. Patrick Beverly was great. Um, I just wanted to kind of throw out these numbers to you because um, I did a lot of research when I was looking this up. Um, 
and I, I threw out Patrick Beverly and Chris Paul were two of the best defenders in the entire game of basketball this year. Um, but I also wanted to mix in Goran Dragic and Eric Bledsoe for kind of like uh, levity or balance, you know, kind of like a, a control player, as you will. Um, so the most shots that a defender is going to experience in a game are either po uh, pick and rolls, uh, for, at least for a point guard, pick and rolls with a ball handler and spot up shots. Uh, Patrick Beverly, 41%, uh, allowed 41% shooting on pick and rolls. Chris Paul, 40.5. And then you have Goran Dragic, 45%. Eric Bloodsell, 49%. Uh, spot up shots, Patrick Beverly only allowed 39% per, uh, shooting. Chris Paul, 38%. Goran Dragic, oddly enough, 34%. And then Eric Bloodsell, 44%. So you kind of got a mix there. You could see that the consistent numbers were Patrick Beverly and uh, Chris Paul, two of the more elite defenders. Just people were having a hard time scoring on those guys consistently. Um, but one of the other things that I did, I looked at in my research was Patrick Beverly had 3.1 deflections per game, and that was among the league leaders. And he also led the league in recovering loose balls, 1.6 loose balls a game. And this is just a guy that throws caution to the wind and always is diving for, for loose balls. You see it all the time. Uh, one of the other stats that figures into a great defensive player's is the amount of charges taken. Patrick Beverly is always there and always seems to get a charge. He was tied for sixth in the league at about 0.33% uh, uh, charges a game. So every, every three games he would pull off a charge. But it seemed like he would get a charge every single game. It just, it is what it is. Patrick Beverly was always there. He was always consistent on defense. Very few times you would see someone just go off on Patrick Beverly. He was going to make guys work for it. And that was one of the things you take away from Patrick Beverly this season. Now, with Patrick Beverly being this amazing lockdown defender, he's probably due a raise. And that is why you are seeing all these teams come out of the woodwork to try to acquire services. And the Rockets might eventually flip him to get some assets to try to entice a Chris Paul or or, or um, someone else, Chris Paul or Cal Lowry to come back to Houston. Although I think they should hang on to Patrick Beverly, but that's besides the point. Patrick Beverly's do a raise. Uh, when I was looking at some numbers today, I saw that Austin Rivers, one of the worst point guards in the league, actually makes $12.5 million more than Patrick Beverly. That's sad. That's sad. I am Team Patrick Beverly deserves a raise. So hopefully he will get one this offseason. If not, hopefully the next team that takes Patrick Beverly on will treat him money-wise a little better because he has earned a lot of money. He is the Rockets version of Tony Allen, and you got to treat him with some respect. Um, so wrapping this up, the other guys that got uh, all defensive team votes, they did not make all defensive team, of course, but... Uh, Trevor Ariza also received a few votes, and so did Eric Gordon, rounding out the rest of the Rockets' best defenders. Next year, look for Patrick Beverly to also be among the first or second team, but I also expect uh, Tre uh, Trevor Ariza, I also expect Clint Capella to start making some noise on an all-team defensive basis. So that's all I got. Guys, I appreciate you guys for giving this a watch. I got six things for you to do if you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video, feel free to share, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. Also comment, let me know how good of a season you think Patrick Beverly had. Do you think that Patrick Beverly is now going to be a perennial first team all defensive player? Is this the first year of a massive Chris Paul run where he is going to be first team all defense for like the next half decade? Let me know your thoughts on that. Also, if this is your first time viewing my YouTube channel, you've never seen my happy smiley face before, give me a follow on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Joshua. And lastly, please follow my friends over at Countryside Massage here in Conroe, Texas. They are linked in the description below. Guys, I am out of here. I will see y'all next time. Have a good one.